Good morning, everyone, and welcome to a brand new episode of Fan Football First and Ten. I am your host, Jordan Mann, and with me, as always, is Coach Rob Grandy. Coach, congrats on the win. Appreciate it, Jordan. Fan comes off an exciting uh, senior day. 52-13 uh, was the final against Greensboro College, and it pretty much was that from the start. It was never really close as Farham jumped out to a quick score to start the game thanks to a one special teams, Colin King, 56-yard punt, pin him at the three, and then two plays later, Quadre uh, Witcher had a forced fumble, and Farham was looking first and goal at the nine. Yeah, that came out fast and early, and uh, you know, a few turnovers you know, swung the tide and took advantage of that. and. Uh, jumped on them and stayed on them, and uh, you know, turned out to be a pretty good day for us. Yeah, it was. Uh, Quadre had a very big, ga very big game, as we'll get into it. As he had back-to-back -back possessions of interceptions for the team as well. He did in that first half. We had uh, four total uh, turnovers. Uh, Jaquise McCray uh, or Jaquise Sidner got a uh, a pick later in the second quarter, but Quadre was filling up the stat line early and. Uh, you know, the offense capitalized off those turnovers and putting points on the board, and, uh, you know, it was a pretty productive day. Now, our early in the game as well, when after Farron was up 7 nothing, you went for it on fourth and one at Greensboro's 34, got it for 15 yards, and then man punched in on a 19-yard run to go up 14 nothing. Did you like the play call at the fourth and one? Yeah, I mean, we were in a position, we're kind of in that dead zone to punt the ball and kick the ball and, um, you know, felt good about the call. And uh, Zach actually took a boot, um, you know, to his left and just kept the ball and made a nice cut and set us up for the next play where Brian took it in from 19 yards out to uh, score a touchdown. Now, was the boot, it was a design run or a pass? No, it was a run. pass option. Actually, Brian was supposed to get out in the flat, and their defensive end did a good job to keep him from getting out there. So his primary option was taken away, and, you know, Zach just made a play and, uh, you know, capitalized on it. And uh, next possession, Greensboro came down, and they didn't even really come down. They rushed for a loss of four yards, and it was fumbled. And then by Marquez Brown, but it was recovered by Ben Foster. And, uh, that set up another touchdown drive by a man 11 yards, go up 21-0. Yeah, short fields are always nice, and uh, we got enough of them in the first quarter to, to put three scores on the board and uh, you know, took care of business um, you know, pretty quick. Yeah, when you're up three scores that early, I know the team's feeling rejuvenated and everything, but as a coach in the back of your mind, I know you don't want to – you want to keep the foot on the uh, foot on the throttle, if you will, and that's what y'all seem to do as y'all went up 28 nothing on a Sam Martin two-yard score. Yeah, it's good to get Sam in the end zone. Senior day, Sam's been a great Panther, and uh, it's been real supportive of everything we've done since we've been here, and uh, just great to see him get some opportunities. But when you get up early, sometimes you kind of relax a little bit as a team, and uh, we didn't relax, and the guys just kept playing through the first half, and uh, you know continued to, to put points on the board and. Um, it took control of things. Yep, and uh, pretty much summed it up too was going up 35 nothing, and with the score 35 nothing, the score was never really close. Like you said, 52-13. Uh, what was your message to the team at half being up that big? Just That's like like usual. It's tough to get a message when you're down big or up big, but you just want to play the next series and next down, and uh, you know try not to pay attention to the scoreboard. All well knowing. You know, what was going on on that day was a good day for Farum. Now, I saw the Hall of Fame class was there as well. Did they talk to the team before or after the game or anything? Yeah, Nate Daniels was a late 90s cornerback, a defensive player here that I got a chance to meet this weekend. And uh, Nate came in on Friday and addressed the team in our walkthrough and did a great job talking to them about being great and uh, some of his path through, through Farum. And then Saturday, obviously, had a, a big day at the, the luncheon and then – uh, shared the game with us and made it into the locker room afterward and celebrated the victory. So it was good to have Nate around and um, you know, let our guys see where you can wind up and have some gratitude for where he's been. Yeah, I mean, it was a great game for him to see as the offense put up over 500 yards on the day. And man had a, it's his fourth straight game of 200 yards and seven straight of 100 yards. Yep, he's uh, you know, been doing well. The whole offense is obviously a part of that with the offensive line play. We've had some injuries. We've had some mixing and matching up there. So it's a credit to Coach Summers and the staff to get that glue together. And, and then the guys in the perimeter, you know, I always say when you're having big days on the ground, your receivers have to be doing more than catching the ball. And they've been doing a great job getting those uh, downfield blocks to help some of those big plays. Yeah, he's had uh, 208 yards on 26 carries and five touchdowns. Is that a record? Is that close to a record? Uh, he tied a record. He said at LaGrange, I believe it was earlier, he had five touchdowns in a game, which um, 
you know, certainly a, a productive day. Kahari Chase made it to the end zone, another back, and like I said, Sam got in on the action. So, you know, Brian had a big day, but uh, it's good to see a couple of those other guys that are, are quite capable, you know, having some opportunities as well. Yeah, and also that uh, kind of goes under the radar is Clifford set the school record for season pass completion with 121 and pass attempts with uh, 227. So that's good to see out of a young QB as well. Yeah, and as we've migrated out of the option game, you know, some of those passing records are going to be, uh, be passed. And it's good to see Zach take advantage of those opportunities. Now, going ahead, looking ahead, final game of the season at Maryville. You're seven and two, coming off a very nice win streak. What's the key going into Maryville and trying to continue the win streak, and then going into the off season? Yeah, it's not to think about the win streak and what you've done, but think about what you got to do. And it's the weekly message to our team. They've kind of bought into that mindset, which is why you get to stack good games on others. And uh, you know, if you think about the past, you're sure to fail in the future. So we try to. You know, regroup, refocus, and I uh, got a good Maryville squad down there, you know, finishing up their last home game. They've been real good at home, and uh, we've been pretty good on the road this year, and, um, you know, we're looking forward to a, a tough battle down there near Knoxville. Well, Coach, good luck. It will be the uh, final game of the season. Uh, hopefully the Farron Panthers finish 8-2 and two going into the offseason looking strong. And, Coach, as always, best of luck, and thank you. Yep, appreciate it, Jordan. Go Dukes.